Well, happy Memorial Day, everyone. And to CUA, Randy here. Having a little fun in the shop today. Playing around with um, the concept of measuring the value of an inductor um, without a meter, without an inductance meter or an LCR meter. Um, there was a couple of articles I saw online for doing that. One of which was um, I think the site was called daycounter.com and basically what they're saying is you take and put a 100 ohm resistor in series with an inductor excite that with a, a signal you know, function generator, sine wave, some kind um, and work your way up um, in frequency until the voltage drop across the resistor is half of what the source voltage is is being applied to the circuit. Um, a lot like this, actually. So, <clears throat> just try to hold that steady. <laughs> so, you get your source here, VS, your inductor here that you don't know the value for, and a 100 ohm resistor. Um, with the calculator they have on their site, you can put in any value you want, but I've noticed the higher this resistor goes, the higher the frequency you need to do this. So, and um, I don't know, it just seems to be more uh, easier to work with with a lower value. I haven't tried anything less than 100. I did 150 ohms and, and that worked fine too. <clears throat> In fact, that's what I've got the circuit set up for right now. Um, but my example that I'm using with math and everything is going to be 100 ohms, like they explain on the website. Um, and the idea is, again, is that you want between ground and um, the, the junction between the inductor and the resistor, you want one half of the voltage being applied by the source, okay? And when you do that, you plug the number of the, res or the value of the resistor. This is very important that this resistor is um, like a 1%, 100 ohm, or if you're going to have some other weird odd value, whatever, make, just plug that number into the website. It'll work with other values, but um, they just use 100 as an example. And again, I think it's daycounter.com, I'm pretty sure. But there's a couple uh, websites if you Google for um, how to measure inductance, I believe was the search. You'll find some calculators that way. All right. Um, <clears throat> so, the circuit, if I can move this around, I'm being too jumpy if I am, I apologize, but we'll try. So, this here is the, the circuit. And basically, you know, like I said, I mean, this resistor is because I had a 100 ohm, I was playing with that, I took it off, and I'm using 154 or something that was a precision resistor. Anyway, if you measure this resistor that you're using, even if it's not 100 ohm, just make sure you know the exact value of it and plug it in to the calculator, it'll probably still be alright. Um, so, got source coming in here to the top of the inductor, measuring that with the scope probe there. And then another scope probe at the junction between the resistor and the other side is ground. So that's how that is. And then over here, see if we get this set up. Da, 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 da. And the scope. <coughs> um, I've got um, two waveforms there. The blue waveform basically is the uh, source voltage. And then the uh, yellow waveform is the, well it's not really blue, I guess it's more like a teal in there. Then the blue wave, or the uh, yellow waveform is the um, junction point. This scope, it's great at measuring voltages, but it toggles, I've noticed, like between 44 and 46. And on this one, and, uh, so the only issue I've seen so far doing this, and again, I just one other comment, this is kind of a ballparking thing. You know, if you have an inductor and it's like, I have no idea what value this is, and you can go through measuring turns and dimensions and calculate it and all that, or you can try this, you know, it's going to get you close enough um, to the area of what the value is of the inductor, and that's kind of the idea, you know, especially when you don't have a meter to do it with. Um, so, this is like, when this is toggling the 46, which is what I've been using, in this case, so 46 is half of 92, so that's about half. Um, <clears throat> it is half, actually. <laughs> it's not about half. Um, so with that, um, I move this down to the generator. I have the, uh, we can get there now, the function generator. 
you see that? I've not zoomed using a video mode. Oh yeah, not too bad. Um, set at 2.95 megahertz. Um, and you can vary it a bit and it, and it doesn't toggle the voltages that quickly on the scope. So, you know, kind of a little bit of a hit and miss. Now, I did that because I didn't want to take the circuit apart that I had, okay? Um, for my uh, real example here. So, um, the one that I did, the example I have, and that's what's on the spectrum analyzer, and that's what you're looking at now. Um, I had a 106 ohm re resistor. I'll show you this on my paper here. So, <clears throat> sorry. Now I'll move that over here. Okay. Oh, that's kind of annoying with that light, isn't it? So I had 106 ohms. Um, when I used 106 ohms, I came up with 1.966 megahertz and um, 14.863 uh, microhenries for the inductor. Um, when I did the other resistance value that I've got the circuit port set up now and plugged it in, and again, the, the voltage is different because it, it had to go, or the voltage, the frequency is different because you had to go up in frequency to increase reactance to match uh, resist the change in resistor value that also I had increased, so that's why the frequency went up. It's also why it's easier to work with a lower value because if you don't have a frequency generator, it goes really high in frequency. You could have a problem depending on the value of inductor that you're measuring. Anyway, <clears throat> um, here's a bunch of math in here. Um, won't get too crazy about it, but the bottom line in the math is really <laughs> that bottom line, <laughs> um, which is basically L equals R times square root of 3. And the square root of 3 is uh, 1.73, however many decimal points you want to go, divided by 2 pi, which is 6.28 times the frequency, and in this case, the frequency in kilohertz. Um, I did that math on the calculator that, and confirmed that that does, in fact, match with what I got on the calculator above. Um, so, you know, that works out all right. Um, <clears throat> what do I have here? Oh, here it is. So, and then with that... Um, I got six six in here, my bad. But anyway, um Yeah, okay. My bad. I was playing around with different settings and stuff. It's still close. Um, very close. Anyway, so a one point nine six eight there's six 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 eight, very close. Um the inductance was uh, in this case with the calculator I'd use millihenries, so I have fourteen point eight millihenries or uh microhenries, excuse me, because it was point zero one four eight six millihenries, which is 14.86 microhenries. And that gave me the inductive reactance. I did that, and I wanted to talk about, about that in just a second. Anyway, so I took the um, I had a capacitor. I wanted to make a tuned circuit, and I wanted to verify. That was kind of the goal there. You know, okay, so I just measured the value of this inductor. So, you know, is it really that value? So I put a 440 puff capacitor in parallel with it. And um, ran it through a calculator to measure resonant frequency and came up with 1.968, which is probably where I got that from. <sighs> you know, again, talk, playing with the numbers, I was trying to be more accurate than really I needed to be, and that was where I was running into trouble there. Here's something that kind of threw me, and then I kind of was doing some reading, and it made sense later. The one where I did the inductive reactance, it came out 183.8 ohms, and I'm thinking to myself, originally, well, if it's a voltage divider, and... <laughs> The resistor is 100 ohms, why wouldn't the reactance be 100 ohms? And then, uh, it's been a while since I've been in school, this stuff, you know. So then I got realizing that that's a lot of, you know, complex conjugate and angular and whatever, you know, Pythagorean type math that is involved in that whole calculation. It's just not simply a matter of um, a voltage divider because it's not two resistors. One has inductive reactance and there's phase angles and phase differences and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So. That's why that resi that resistance, or actually reactance rather, um, is not the same as the react uh, the resistor value of 100 ohms, or, or in my case, 106 ohms. Okay, so we got that. Now what I did is I built that circuit. Let me move this so it's a little easier to see. Hopefully, I built the circuit. Yes, I did. Because I'm just a great big kid. Okay, so built the circuit. And 
I hope you can read that. I can almost read it on my display in the camera. That says like 1.966, and that one, I don't think you see just below the decibel reading, there's a little one. That's a marker it's turned on, and I've got it pretty much in the valley. And that is the resonant point of that tuned circuit, which I have attached right to the input of the spectrum analyzer and I'm feeding it or sweeping it with a tracking generator. Great analyzer, by the way. Um, certainly not a you know $10,000 analyzer, but for the price, it's a, it's a pretty good analyzer. You can have a lot of fun with it. <clears throat> if you can't afford a big one, this one's the one to get. Um, and just like, so just for saying, got mine at teequipment.net, by the way. <laughs> I don't think I've said that yet in any of my videos, but that's where I've got all my Rigel stuff from. It was teequipment.net. Um, I like the people there. Um, um, Evan is really good. The staff is really good. Um, Chris, at Ar uh, Chris Armstrong at um, RigelTech.com, and, and I think he also has an address at Rigel.com. They're really good people, really um, nice. They're really friendly. They will work with you with just about anything. Um, anyway. So, built a tune circuit, put it on the analyzer, set it up to sweep it, uh, normalize this none, that's why it looks a little squirrely, didn't figure it was that important, really, as long as they get that dip in there, I was looking for the resonant frequency point. Anyway, and it matches up with what we had on my papers for calculations, uh, when the 1.966 um, megahertz, so there you have it. Um, can't think of anything else. That was pretty much it. So again, you know, just kind of to recap. Um, that's all you're doing right there. Use the circuit resistor in series with the inductor, just like I showed you earlier. Okay. Measure at the uh, half at the um, junction of the resistor and the inductor to ground. Look for half the voltage. And then plug that into a cal the calculator. There's plenty of them online. Just do a little Google search on them. I use daycounter.net or excuse me, daycounter.com, um, and it'll give you an approximate inductance value. And we pretty much confirmed that that value that we get is reasonably accurate, as you see on the analyzer. So, have fun. Knock yourself out. Hey, built another uh, uh, attenuator, and it's a tiny little bugger. I always do a little tidbit of something else on the end before my battery dies, right? <laughs> but look at this little thing. I don't even know if I can get it to focus. Let's try. No, nah, it's not going to focus, is it? Oh, well, I tried. But that's little. <laughs> you should try soldering SMD components onto a little connector like that. Oh, my gosh. It is, a, it is an exercise in patience. I guarantee you. All right, take care, everybody. I'll quit babbling on here. And to COA, 7-3s, catch you next time.